Disney has released its sequel to its creative twist on the Sleeping Beauty story, Maleficent, on its streaming service, Disney+. Plus. Is the second movie, Maleficent, Mistress of Evil, worth your time? The original Disney movie, which starred Angelina Jolie in the title role, focused on the story of a young, naive fairy who fell in love with a human. The human just so happened to be the self-centered and ambitious Stefan, who violently betrays Maleficent in order to become king. Understandably, rage over this betrayal infects everything this magical fairy does, up to and including turning the magical kingdom over which Maleficent rules, the Moors, dark, and cursing Stefan's daughter, Aurora, to die by pricking her finger on a spinning wheel when the girl turns 16. Maleficent watches over Aurora, played by Elle Fanning, as she's raised in the woods, eventually coming to recognize the young girl's innocence and attempts to undo her curse, but to no avail. Maleficent arranges for Prince Philip to attempt to revive Aurora with true love's first kiss. However, it turns out that since Philip had just met Aurora, the two aren't quite yet in love. Then it dawns on Maleficent. She kisses the young girl on the forehead, and Maleficent learns to love again. The movie ends with Stefan dying while trying to seek revenge on Maleficent, and Maleficent restoring the Moors to their former beauty, and setting Aurora as the queen of the Moors and the human world, with Aurora continuing her romance with Philip. So with all the conflicts seemingly resolved, the sequel would have a tough hill to climb. Disney chooses to attack this by portraying the 2014 film as just a smaller piece in a much larger world with an even greater danger. That danger is personified by Prince Philip's mother, Queen Ingrid, played by Michelle Pfeiffer. The film draws its audience in with an opening mystery which turns into horror. Three humans attempt to abduct a few small fairies from the moors. A large magical creature confronts the poachers, killing two of them. This is Maleficent taking drastic action to protect the magical creatures of the Moors. The survivor turns to Olstead, Philip's future kingdom, and sells what appears to be a magical flower to a mysterious figure. As for the writing, the plot juxtaposes two strong female leads, Maleficent, who is jaded and remains suspicious of humans, and Ingrid, a cold and calculating queen, masterfully manipulating everyone for her own ambition. Maleficent's suspicious nature falls right into Ingress' plans to portray her as an enemy of the humans who has cast a curse on Ingress' husband, the king. Ingress uses Maleficent's pride and with cunning subtlety uses inferences and backhanded compliments to goad the fairy to react at a celebratory dinner in a show of intimidation. When the king rises in response, Ingress rushes to his side and John suddenly takes ill. All believe that Maleficent and her dark magic is to blame, but Ingrid has secretly used the needle from the cursed spinning wheel, the cursed John. Maleficent escapes, but Ingrid has driven a wedge between her and Aurora. The audience soon learns that Ingrid and her minions have long prepared to wipe out fairy kind and take over the Moors for the creation of iron musket shots, iron being a substance harmful to fairies. We're still Ingrid maimed and enslaved a fairy named Lickspittle to use a special flower from the Moors, a toon bloom, to combine with iron powder to create a weapon that robs fairies of their magic and turns them into mundane plant life. Mushroom-like fairies turn into ordinary mushrooms, dandelion-like fairies turn into ordinary dandelions, tree-like fairies turn into real trees. Maleficent, wounded by an iron round in her escape, shot by Ingress' trusted aide and expert crossbow marksman, Gerda, is rescued by another like her, a dark fairy named Bora. Bora introduces Maleficent to a secret world of dark fairies, known as the Fae, who have gone into hiding from the humans. When Maleficent realizes that all the tomb blooms have been harvested from the moors, and that Ingress has invited all of fairy kind to attend the wedding of Philip and Aurora, she senses a trap. The fae are off to war for their own survival. Meanwhile, the fairies, who are enticed to see this once-in-a-lifetime union of the human world and the magic world, dutifully march into a wedding chapel, excited to see the wedding. But there, they're trapped. 
With Gerda playing the wedding music on a grand pipe organ, she hits a key that releases the secret weapon from one of the pipes. Fairies, touched by the substance, turn into plants. Only through sacrifice this fiddle. The blue fairy who helped raise Aurora plug herself into the organ pipe to stop the organ from devastating the trapped fairies. But fiddle is turned into a blue flower. The humans are caught off guard by the multitude of the fae who attack. Off guard, but not unprepared. The humans have manufactured enough weapons with the secret substance to counter the fae assault. Aurora, however, has discovered Ingrid's plot. While she is at first locked away, Philip finds her and Aurora tells him of his mother's treachery. A magnificent battle ensues. Lickspittle presents Maleficent with the needle from the spindle, and she breaks the curse, awakening John and causing the spindle to disappear. Aware of the plot, John works to regain control of his forces and to press for peace. Maleficent turns Ingrith into a goat, which John and Philip agree they will wait for a while before requesting that Maleficent turns her back into a human. The wedding resumes, succeeding in uniting the humans and the fairies in a bittersweet moment, while Notgrass and Thistlewit argue over Aurora's dress and whether it should be green or red, Fiddle, now a blue flower, turns the dress blue. Maleficent promises to be back for the christening. Disney has crafted a sequel that doesn't minimize the original. In the original, Maleficent overcame her own desire for revenge to unify the two kingdoms. The sequel does retcon that to be the kingdom of Aurora's father, Stefan, and the Moors, but it works. It fits the plot realistically into a bigger picture that accounts for Prince Philip and his family. The portrayal of fear leading to a desire to conquer in Ingrith is understandable and skillfully laid out. The way to eradicate fairies, using their own magic and a substance known to be harmful to them, is a creative spin on the fairy genre. Nonetheless, this is where the movie's rating of PG must be emphasized, as the sight of fairies being either killed or transformed into nothing but plants would be shocking and emotionally scarring for young children. The sudden appearance of a whole race of dark fairies like Maleficent was surprising, but a valid exercise of license over a subject matter heretofore not addressed, namely Maleficent's origin. If you can stomach the violence, which by adult standard is not bad, but by kid standards could be shocking, then the writing is well done. From the beginning of the movie, the audience gets the hint that the film's title is ironic. Maleficent's not evil. She's just jaded due to her betrayal by a human who she thought loved her. She once again overcomes her own biases and prejudice to unite the two kingdoms. Visually, the film is stunning. The Moors is beautiful. The computer graphics is truly art that is stunning in its execution. The small fairies provide silly slapstick humor. The atmosphere of foreboding and mistrust emanating from Maleficent is palpable. Ingrid's dressing room, full of porcelain-like mannequins for the queen's dresses, is appropriately creepy, as is the way Ingrith enters her lair by seemingly cracking the neck of one of the mannequins. The scene of Ingrith walking past the workers who are forging the musket balls is dark and fiery, like Satan overseeing the restless labors of hell. Lickspittle's laboratory is dark with an underlying sense of terror. The final battle scene is both beautiful and horrifying. The weapons explode with vibrant colors of red, with fairies morphing into lovely flora as they perish. With respect to the acting, Angelina Jolie and Michelle Pfeiffer are solid professionals, as is Elle Fanning and the rest of the cast. From a studio known for hovering between two extremes when it films a sequel, either disheartening poor or masterfully crafted, Disney has scored a win with Maleficent, Mistress of Evil, at least for adults. Parents should be careful before allowing children, particularly small children, to watch this film. The violence, particularly as it affects fairies, is concerning. Thank you for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. If there are any topics you would like me to address in the future, please let me know in the comments below. Now, I don't like talking about this. 
but I am currently disabled because of complications following cancer surgery. If you're feeling generous, I'll have a link to my PayPal account in the description below. Thank you.